Election Commission, June 6, 2022, at 2 o'clock p.m. Um, the first item of business is to consider the minutes from the May 20th, 2022 meeting. Uh, commissioners, if you could take a look at that and uh, let us know if there are any uh, suggested changes or if it's ready for a vote. Commissioners, are we ready for a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the minutes as written. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I second that. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. The second item of business is, is to consider the ballot format for the August 4th, 2022 election. Uh, we're receiving that now. Hey, we Roberts, can you give us a little bit of an explanation about what we've received? Mr. Chairman, I, I distributed uh, a sample of the ballot, uh, both the Republican, the Democratic, and the county general ballot. Um, those are hot off the presses because we have included the um, candidate, Mr. Starbuck, in there uh, after receiving information from the coordinator of elections over the weekend. Okay. You'll notice that this is the, the printed ballot. So every voter, if they choose let's say the Republican ballot, they will get the Republican and general ballot. So it will be four pages long uh, that they will mark and send back to us. That means we will also, when we go to scan those ballots at, on election night, we'll be scanning four pages for every voter. And uh, typically the state reviews and approves this ballot the state has reviewed and approved the ballot format. Has it yet reviewed Mr. Starbucks being on there? I did not send that to them this morning. Okay. All right. The format is approved. Okay. All right. Um, just, just to update uh, the other commissioners, Chancellor Perkins ruled on Friday that in the fifth uh, House district for the for the U.S. Congress, uh, that would be the Republican primary, that 
um, Robbie Starbucks should be on the ballot. I understand that an appeal either has been or will be filed by the state Republican Party. Of course, we have no idea what the result of that will be. Um, so my suggestion would be that we consider a motion that would give uh, AOE Roberts and the staff the ability to, uh, number one, uh, send the ballot off as finally approved by the state and also to send the ballot off um, reflecting any changes by more, um, more current court action. Uh, yes, Commissioner Starling, you're recognized. Uh, on this ballot here, and I'm, and I'm specifically looking at uh, uh, Senate District 19. Uh, see, we got several people running. Is there a possibility that that would be, could that be a runoff or is it one or take all? Winner take all in each primary. Oh, okay. So it wouldn't, wouldn't be a runoff in that. Gotcha. Okay, so the ballot before you, it's got all the offices and all the candidates on it. So obviously, when a voter comes up, it will only have one congressional district, one senatorial district, one house district, of course. So we put it all just for easier for y'all to approve it or look at it and uh, for the Secretary of State to approve it. And basically, page three, uh, I'm sorry. Page two, three, and four will all be exactly the same except for the school board on the general ballot. We laid it out that way for us to pick it easier.
also sent that to the uh, legal department, and Nikki had a great idea about adding charter in front of each of the amendments. So we added that, and we got that reapproved by uh, Kathy at the Secretary of State also. It didn't have charter at first. It just had amendment. We just had originally had it from the wording, amendment number one. I got then you. when we sent it to legal, Nikki suggested we added charter in front of each of those, amendment okay. one, two, three, and four. Okay. Which is a good idea. One of the things that we are a little concerned about, the length of the ballot, is how long it will take people to actually vote uh, the ballot. So in the sample ballot uh, that we'll be sending to every household, we're instructing them to mark that ballot, bring it with them so that they feel better prepared when they step into the, the voting booth to mark that ballot. Have we thought of ways, is there any way we can encourage people to read it ahead of time so they don't um you know we'll be doing some messaging uh, or some press information to try to do that we'll also have sample ballots available at each uh polling location so if you're in line you can pick one up and uh, look at it right there Discussion or a vote? Oh, discussion, I guess. Although I totally understand and appreciate the idea of bringing the ballot, you know, the, to help the voter out, but does that particularly potentially run to like, you know, you can't bring in campaign materials and things of that nature? And my concern, like I said, is that are we getting close to that line because someone could bring it with them? It's a four page ballot, so, you know, I, I, you, know you don't want to get into the role of playing, you know, you know, trying to keep it all, like, check the right stuff. But, you know, it is concern, just off the top. So the, the, the sample ballot, it looks a little bit different than this. One, it's on 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper, uh, and it's folded over. So it looks, feels, it's got other information in there, like uh, the early voting schedule, uh, reminding people on election day that you have to vote in your particular polling location. So it looks different. It's got the same kind of information, but it looks different enough that, so, right. So basically poll watchers and poll directors make right. sure that it's, right. it's and, okay. And, and keep in mind, in Tennessee, there aren't paper ballots floating around that aren't attached to very specific documentation, at least in Davidson County, that allows you to vote on a paper ballot. Mm -hmm. So even if these showed up absent being with that documentation, these would not be counted. Right. So the, the risk of that in Tennessee, because of the way we do uh, voting, is the risk is much less maybe than in some other states. Have we thought about the potential that somebody may be concerned that if they bring their ballot in pre-marked, that people will say if they're in line, we'll see how somebody is intending to vote or let's say somebody leaves their ballot 
uh, their sample ballot in the polling location, it'll be there pre-marked with, you know, with somebody's decision already about how they're going to vote. You know, I don't know that we've thought about that very much. It's kind of like when you're standing at the ATM machine, you're not wearing a T-shirt with your four-digit pin on it and some other stuff. You're not carrying it in your hand. You're not laying it around. Uh, these folks know if you want to keep your vote secret, you're going to take that sample ballot that you've marked with you or throw it in the trash on the way out. The key we want everyone to remember is the sample ballot is yours to do with what you want. The ballot that you're voting, in order for it to count, it has to go in the scanner. That's the key. And because of the shape, size difference, uh, training the poll officials to be aware of what's going on. We've allowed people to mark sample ballots in the past. I mean. The, since I've been here in 2016, you were allowed to bring your sample ballot in. In fact, you can have it marked on your phone and bring it in and look at it. So there's a lot of room that the state's allowed as far as sample ballots go to prepare the voter for when they get into the, the polling booth. And it's also considered an official election commission document, so they're allowed to bring it in the poll with them. Uh, no, I'm not talking about the legalities of whether they can bring it in, but what I thought we were just told was that we're going to send people a letter or a notice encouraging them to mark it and bring it with them. So if people then start, you know, dropping them at the election site pre-marked, then I just can anticipate somebody coming in and saying, hey, wait a minute. You know, there was this suggestion I'm supposed to vote a certain way because there was a bunch of these ballots laying around. And I just wanted to raise that as a potential issue, not that it would be illegal, but it might lead some people to think that we were suggesting something to the sure. public. Sure. And keep in mind, having the voter or telling the voter they can bring the sample ballot with them, this is not, this is not new. We've done this before in the past, it probably hasn't resonated with a lot of people because, you know, one, the ballot hasn't been this long before. They think, I can remember all of this. So we're just letting them know if you want to. You don't have to. But if you want to, you can mark your ballot and bring it in. Okay. On the amendments, people, if you've read them before you come, you don't need to mark them. You can probably remember of the four which way you want to vote. Mr. Okay. Chairman, I have a question on the uh, uh, Supreme Court at large and all these court of appeals. And I understand that it's retain and replace. Uh, what happens if you get more replace than you get retained? I don't know 100% the answer to your question, but I'm going to assume that the governor would appoint someone to be on the next ballot, and they would have to be voted to retain or replace. Okay. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah, and I, you know, someone asked me about that, too, and I wasn't I'll sure. I'll find either, out and let you uh, know, the, or the commission know tomorrow. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. That's it. I think it, I think that's only happened one time so far. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner, do we know if uh, they've asked for expedited uh, appeal process so that we can quickly know whether was it Robbie Starbucks is going to be on or off the ballot? I have not seen the papers that have been filed, but it was it's my understanding that they're going to seek uh, expedited review okay. and that 
the papers are going to say they need an answer by Friday, this Friday. Okay. Well. Any other discussion? With no further discussion, do we have a motion? Mr. Chairman, we'll make a motion that we accept the ballot as printed with the necessary adjustments that may be needed uh, pending the appeals from the courts. I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. Next on the agenda, we have uh, several uh, measures that involve personnel matters. Um, number three and four are to approve compensation for the Republican and Democratic machine technicians. Number five is to consider the performance evaluation of our AOE, Mr. Roberts, and number six is to consider the compensation for the administrator of elections. Um, Ms. Hertzfeld is not able to be here today, and uh, I would suggest that we put this off until we can have a full quorum. If if that's acceptable to anyone, um, and if there's no need to consider all of these immediately. I see no objection to that. Okay. I see. All right. So uh, we um, may not need a motion to defer, but oh, but oh. probably let's, why don't we do that? Let's, let's uh, motion to defer items three through six, which is the compensations for machine technicians for Republican and Democrat, as well as the AOE performance evaluation and compensation, which are all six, uh, which are all four of those measures there until the next meeting at the uh, call of the chair or when it's next decided. All right. We have a motion and a second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing no opposition, the motion carries unanimously. Uh, the next item is to review cards. I would suggest we, we drop that down uh, a little later and see whether there's anything further uh, from the AOE on his report. Mr. Chairman, a couple things. In the last meeting, we talked about the um, there was the potential we would need two ballots put in the ballot marking device. Um, Mr. Medley, Mr. Green, they've worked to get it down to where we have one, uh, I think it's a 19 inch ballot though. So it's a longer ballot than what we're used to, but they've um, adjusted the font size a little bit and we're able to get it on one ballot. We will be having to the paper ballots because they're on a longer format than normal. We will be sending those to the printer for the printer to print and uh, we will have them fold those for us at the same time also. All right, quick question, just te technical question. Um, since it's a longer ballot, those will, all, will those still all go through the machine properly and go through and go into actual box so there's not an issue? Right. They, they will go through like the voter won't really recognize except that the paper's long. Everything else in the process will, will flow the same fashion. Okay. Let, let me ask you something. I know we had a bunch of uh, returns on the uh, voter registration cards. Now, that's been cleared up, so when we send this sample ballot out, will it go to the correct address? We're working on clearing those up now. Mm -hmm. um, some people that have actually moved, you know, we, yeah. we hope not to send uh, another sample ballot to them. Um, but... Our goal is to finish 
marking everyone that should be inactive, inactive before early voting starts the 15th of July. If we've made a typo in the address, we'll correct the address so that it will get to the, the right location. Um, but the key is we get that taken care of by the 15th. If a voter comes in, they can correct their ad address at early voting or on election day and change their flag from inactive to active. Um, but if they are no actions taken, then mid-August, let's say, we will send them a forwardable confirmation notice of their address, hoping that they will get that and send it back to us. If they don't take any action after two November elections, we would then be able to remove them from the voter registration database, assuming they no longer live in Davidson County. Is there anything further on the AOE report? I think that's it. We're, we're just hoping that uh, we get all of the answers we need by the 10th um, so that we reduce the risk on getting this election put together. All right. Is there any public comment? No, no one has signed up for public comment. Right, then if that's the case, uh, w the only thing left on our agenda, other than setting the time and date for the next meeting, is to review voter registration cards. Pursuant to Tennessee law, once a quarter, the election commissioners have to personally review a, a certain sample size of voter registration cards. And then we sign off to indicate there were no, we saw no mistakes uh, concerning them. So we are going to do that. It's not particularly exciting. There's one Democrat, and one Republican that looks at each card, and it usually takes us probably a half an hour or so to do that. Uh, we'll come back on the record once we've done that. Uh, but when we do, uh, we're just going to be setting the time and date for the next meeting. So uh, with that, the commission is about to review the voter registration cards pursuant to Tennessee law. Back on the record, the commission has reviewed a uh, sample size of voter registrations uh, for this quarter. And so we are back on uh, the record. It appears we've gone through the agenda except for those matters which we've deferred to the next meeting. Uh, is there any other business before the commission? Commissioners are shaking their heads no. Uh, is there, uh, is, do we have a motion about setting the next meeting? Um, Mr. Roberts, can you give us a, uh, an idea of when the staff thinks a, a next meeting might be necessary? Mr. Chairman, I think uh, probably sometime in the first couple of weeks of July, and we will check the availability of this room and then I will communicate with all the commissioners to see um, what their availability is. All right, now some meetings back, we discussed and considered having a regular meeting date. Uh, where are we on that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I've, I've failed to secure okay. that. So okay. let me check and see the availability right. of this room on a regular date and let's see if we can get that set up. All right, okay. Commissioners, any further discussion on that issue? So, Mr. Chairman, you're going to call of the chair? It sounds like it, okay. yes. Do we have a motion to that effect? Make a motion that we have our next meeting uh, as needed by the call of the chair. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 
Any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. We are, we have a, we need a motion to, to adjourn. I'll make a motion on behalf of Trish Hurstfeld that All we right. adjourn. Okay. I'll second that. We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposition? With no opposition, the motion carries. We are in adjournment. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.